The Taurus Constellation The Taurus Constellation represents a bull and is one of the most noticeable star patterns in the night sky. Taurus is one of the 12 zodiac constellations and is visible during the months of November to March in the Northern Hemisphere. This constellation represents the head and front of a bull. The brightest star in this constellation is called Aldebaran. Aldebaran is an orange giant star and is 65 light years from Earth. It marks the eye of the bull and is often called the eye of Taurus. Taurus also includes two famous open star clusters called the Pleiades and the Hyades. The star cluster called the Pleiades is also known as the Seven Sisters and is part of the bull's left shoulder. The Hyades is part of the bull's face and forms a distinctive triangle shape. Two stars called Tianguan and El Nef form the tips of the bull's horns. To find the Taurus constellation, look for Orion in the night sky. Locate his three belt stars or the string of pearls, and from here draw a line to the Hyades and then another to the Pleiades. The Pleiades is a small star pattern and is often one of the first things we recognize on clear winter nights. In our modern times, most people see six stars within this cluster rather than seven. The Pleiades, or Seven Sisters, is an open star cluster. An open star cluster is made of many stars, roughly the same age, formed from the same molecular cloud or interstellar nursery. It is estimated there are 800 middle-aged stars in the Pleiades star cluster. There are many myths and legends associated with the Pleiades from all around the globe. One story from the indigenous Australian people saw the Pleiades as seven sisters with their glowing fire sticks. This following story is told by the Wondery people of the Kulin Nation. In the dream time, the Garrett Girk sisters alone possessed the secret of fire. Each one carried a burning coal on the end of her digging stick. The burning coals allowed them to cook the yams which they dug out of the ground. The sisters refused to share their coals with anybody, but were ultimately tricked into giving up their secret by a bird called Crow. Crow thought of a cunning plan. After burying a number of snakes in an ant mound, Crow called the Garrett Girk sisters over, telling them that there were ant larvae in the ant mound, which were tastier than yams. The women began digging and unintentionally angered the snakes. The snakes started to attack. Shrieking, the sisters struck the snakes with their digging sticks, and within this frenzy, the live coals flew off. Crow, who had been waiting for this, gathered the coals up and hid them in a kangaroo bag. The women soon discovered the theft and chased the bird, but it simply flew out of their reach. Crow then shared the ability to contain and cook food with fire. Afterwards, the Garrett Girk sisters travelled into the sky, and their glowing fire sticks became the Pleiades star cluster. Another deep sky object to be found in this Taurus constellation near the star Tianguan is the location of the Crab Nebula. This Crab Nebula is about 6,500 light years from Earth and is a supernova remnant and pulsar wind nebula. A pulsar wind nebula is a type of nebula sometimes found inside the shell of a supernova remnant. It is powered by winds generated by a central pulsar. A pulsar is a neutron star that gained angular momentum during its formation. It has an extremely strong magnetic field and beams electromagnetic radiation as it spins. It is a bit like an interstellar lighthouse. The Crab Nebula was first observed in 1731 by John Bevis and later in 1841 by William Parsons, the third Earl of Ross. Ross observed the Crab Nebula in Ireland at Burr Castle. Ross named the Crab Nebula from an earlier drawing he made with his 36-inch telescope in which it resembled a sort of crab. A few years later, when the famous Leviathan of Parsonstown telescope had been built, he produced a refined drawing of different appearance, but the existing name, Crab Nebula, continued to be used. The famous Leviathan of Parsonstown telescope was the largest telescope in the world for 70 years and can still be seen to this day on the grounds of Burr Castle. This photograph was taken and developed by his wife Mary Parsons at about 1854. 
Amongst many other talents, she created her own darkroom and became an influential pioneer in photography. Through using this telescope, Ross was the first to reveal the spiral structure of M51. Today, M51 is known to be a spiral galaxy called the Whirlpool Galaxy. Above is a drawing of M51 by the Earl of Ross next to a modern photograph. Now we are near the end. Next time you have a clear night sky between the months of November and March, see if you can find the constellation of Taurus. Look for Orion with a string of pearls, and from here draw a line to the star called Aldebaran, then the Hyades, the Cleodes, Tianguan, Elnes, and the location of the Crab Nebula. Before we fully finish, I would like to end with a poem called Sappho's Moon and the Pleiades. This was first written by a Greek female poet called Sappho in 570 BC. This is a carefully adapted and lengthened version by A.E. Hoosman. The rainy Pleiades wester, Orion plunges prone. The stroke of midnight ceases and I lie down alone. The rainy Pleiades wester, and seek beyond the sea, the head that I shall dream of and will not dream of me. Good luck, and I hope this is helpful in finding the stars and deep sky objects in the Taurus constellation. Thank you for listening.